All right, this is a plug, and we're going to deal with the Georgia Guidestones and the cube that was recently inserted and removed. Now, um, the removal of it constituted a ritual ceremony. Just about everything that I saw about it. But I also saw some other interesting things without stepping on the toes of other observers and researchers and uh, rehashing what they have said. You know me. I try, you know, I don't always succeed. Just a baby bear square from the D. But I try to find something unique. And as I looked at the footage, that was available on YouTube that uh, captured you know some people just happened to be there when the cube that was mysteriously inserted into the Georgia Guidestone structure was mysteriously uh, uh, you know in, inserted in there uh, was removed and some people just happened to be there and capture that on film you know how that happens you know just uh, by coincidence and I looked at the people and the Holy Spirit began to talk to me I saw some things that I thought were inorganic and uh, so we're gonna look into some things we're gonna go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole than uh, you may expect but, you know yes there was numerology involved Yes, the cube was representative of the Masonic square. It was representative of stone masonry or letho mancy. You have crystal mancy, mancy meaning magic. You have necro mancy, not magic using black people, not negro mancy, necro mancy. Magic using the dead, necro, necrophilia, necro, negro. Same etymology. Watch what you let people call you. Have mercy. But crystal mancy, mancy or magic using crystals. Aromancy, magic using the air, fragrances, uh, perfumes, colognes. We have litho, like a megalith or monolith, one stone, megalith, giant stone lithomancy magic using stones so the cube itself was symbolic of masonry the importance of the cube we know to the Saturn cult and also to masonry in general it is the square personified it is the square square cubed if you will and I thought that the inscriptions uh, on each side of the cube were uh, telling you know you have two four six sides of a cube the top the bottom the left the right the front and the back and on each side you had different inscriptions at uh, you know depending on how you were looking at it if uh, you turn the cube like a die two would be dice but if you take one of the die and you um, allow for the MM to point up and we're assuming that it's an MM because M and M is also symbolic of WW same thing and we looked at M and W a number of times we know that M and W are representations of three sixes. We've seen it a number of times. This was uh, the first rendition that I had uh, got from uh, my brother's memory. And then I looked at the video and drew the second one. So we'll be dealing with this one, although this was pretty close. But this got a lot of things started just to know that the M and M was there. So we looked at some basic things. The M M or your M&M, &M. two thirteens if you want to deal with the numeric value of the M or it's 26 letters Z, 
y x w 26 25 24 23 so the w would be 23 okay i didn't uh and two of them would be 46 but that's not what i saw i looked at the volves that were involved in making a w or making an m and m is three volves three v's and so is a w also three v's you don't see them of course you do we've done this a number of times but some of you are new so for those that are new we have to be fair and balanced we just saying fox news but we will be fair and take some time even for the baby bear v there's a there's a v there's one v there's the second v right there and guess where the third v is at the upside down part here also constitutes a v that's right so in an m or a w you have three v's one v two v and the hump makes a v inverted all right so what is that v equals six the hebrew volve it's six so you have six 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 at the top of the cube okay now the bottom line is because see we can get deep into the uh, numeric value of things involving uh, numerology and excuse me the magic of the wizards and we will but let's get to the bottom line the bottom line is this was a masonic ritual it was about um, it was a in your face ritual and it was about uh, showing and proving how 2014 would be all about uh, destroying or what would appear to be uh, a destruction or a chaos to bring forth an order so they destroyed the cube it would appear as if they destroyed a Masonic plan it will appear that way too okay that's going to be part of the agenda part of the uh, Hegelian dialectic the problem reaction solution the thesis antithesis synthesis they're going to make it look like that's one reason why you have all of this um, civil insurrection and domestic violence they're going to make it look like the bad guys have been dealt with how else can you achieve peace and security it's not only going to be on a worldwide front or as far as foreign policy goes, but also it's going to have to do with domestic, what happens here at home, foreign and domestic. Foreign violence, when we go overseas and uh, commit acts of violence by our uh, operatives such as ISIS and Al-Qaeda, then you have domestic when we do things here on the home front like uh, when they had Occupy and Occupy had uh, gotten um, <laughs> uh, co-opted Occupy had gotten infiltrated and in some places like I believe it was in Oakland uh, was one of those places uh, Occupy was getting uh, beaten so you have domestic violence same thing you see happening in Ferguson that's domestic violence we think of it as what happens inside of the household but it has to do with what happens on the home front as well. So that's one reason why you see the Rays in the news. And before, remember, it was Ray Carruth and Ray Lewis. Okay? And you had the Ray Vins also involved. But you see these things in the news because it is representative of Lucifer in one of his many disguises in his Egyptian get up as Ray. Atum Ray. Uh, uh, Amen Ray. What people will say is Ra. And even uh, Melly Mel, uh, Grandmaster Flash's uh, MC, uh, with rah, okay, and uh, of course you switch it around, it still comes out R. So uh, that is one of the ways that Lucifer is letting it be known that he is indeed uh, taking his throne as the Prince of the Earth, and his uh, peons, his group. The Masonic Order 
uh, they are also going to play their role and they're going to let it appear as if they've been thwarted because guess what they have been cast in the role of the bad guy and YouTube <laughs> YouTube and the internet and the World Wide Web has been used to help to project that role upon them. Is it true? Well, yes, it is true. But there's a way that they're playing a game. They're running a game. And this game involves um, the good cop, bad cop dynamic, uh, but controlled opposition. So they are playing the role of the bad guy. They are the opposition. They are playing the, the role of the heavy or the villain in scripture. They are doing their job to set up the great work, which is about chaos, causing chaos, causing anarchy to bring forth order or martial law. So we have all been influenced to see them as the bad guy which they are they have stepped into this role they willingly put on the proper costume and uh, everybody even uh, the uh, you know when you're playing a game with dice and someone has loaded the dice or marked the dice okay uh, marked dice there everyone is playing their role to help the average person know that the culprit is the masonry, the brotherhood, okay? Except uh, there are many different derivatives and branches of the masonry. So when we point and we simply say, well, it's the masons, and we point and we simply say it's the Shriners, we're letting the Rosicrucians off the hook, okay? We're letting the uh, sons of Cain off the hook, the brotherhood of the snake off the hook. The Temple of Set off the hook. Okay, there, there are so many different offshoots now that they are allowing for one to play the scapegoat. So that's what the cube is symbolic of. The MM is symbolic of triple six and triple six. But again, when these people speak in code, uh, there are things that have multiple meanings, M.M. And one of the meanings is indeed Master Mason, of course, without a doubt. But that's not all that's going on. Let's look at some more things. What's the 13th letter? M and M, two thirteens. And two triple sixes. What a coincidence. When a guy through the. When the park worker. Who just uh, you know was doing his job. And came in and pulled out the cube. When he threw the cube on the ground. When he cast down. The cube. It landed. Just by chance. Happenstance. The two M's was on top. I remember seeing the two M's uh, on top. At, at, uh, that was the uh, picture ingrained and engraved in my mind. Now, there were people, of course, like we said, they were on the scene. Uh, and the way that the camera work was done, just like when they're looking at UFOs, and you wonder, why is the camera work so shaky? You know, looking at what you're looking at, wouldn't you be more cautious and careful to hold the camera still so people can see what you're trying to show them? Well, something like this happened and occurred with the cube. And it appeared uh, that, you know, that there was too much camera shifting and whatnot going on. And then when you look up, the MM is on top. So, I, I, I don't know. You know, maybe when he threw it down, it didn't land right on the MM or, or with the MM facing up. But that was uh, the result was the mm on top okay so again it's a way to symbolize several things the triple six on top lucifer on top 
which he desired to be. He wanted to ascend to the top. Then also representing the two thirteens, the thirteen representative of not only of Osiris uh, final or missing body part, the phallus, but which is uh <laughs> Symbolize a number of ways, not just in the obelisk, but in the, the in the pillar. Much of what I saw had to do with the duality, the twins, the two pillars. So this was Masonic through and through, okay. Um, and and uh, we're gonna look more into some things. All right, on the bottom side, you had the jam. You know, we like to say we like the heavyweight jam around here. I was flabbergasted to see the usage of jam uh, in this manner and I thank uh, Sister uh, Sister Jones for uh, showing and proving bringing that to uh, my attention because I wasn't hip to it I'd heard about the stone uh, uh, my Sister Precious had sent me a link uh, to look at I get a lot of uh, messages and comments and prayer requests things I have to deal with I try to do those first then look at my links and I hadn't got to my links yet but I saw in the comments um, sister Jones had asked about well uh, what's the origin of the word jam and she was referring to the cube and refer and also uh, you know the fact that we always say we have your way jamming so I looked at uh, what she said and I, it played in my head before I saw any video on the cube. So we're going to deal with that too. But let's jump into the most unique thing that I saw. And then let's come back to the rest of this. Can we do that? I promise I will. We're going to deal with jam. We're going to deal with the rest of the numerology. Those are things that I'm sure you've seen other people do. This I've not heard yet. One of the individuals who's there, uh, who just happens to be on the scene when this monumentous event is taking place, he had on some interesting clothing. And you know, Amos 3 and 7 says, uh, thank you to Sister Bourne for that. Amos 3 and 7 says, surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants the prophets all right and um i believe something was revealed to me and uh also big big shout out to uh all of the new viewers uh always my main man shoddy mike and um brother uh brother uh, dylan uh, and brother tim uh, we're, we're, we're going to continue where we started. But um, I saw a guy in some camouflage shorts, and he handled the cube for a long period of time. And I thought to myself, well, you know, just a young, wild guy. He was tatted up, up, up and down his arms. He had on some camo shirts, excuse me, some, some camo shorts and a black tee. The black T had some uh, writing across it. The writing was done in such a way that I knew it was sigil magic behind it. And I wondered what did it say. So uh, with the help of uh, my brother Joe, we looked uh, into not only what it said, but we also looked into uh, the group that it was promoting. It was indeed a, a t-shirt promoting a group that I'm not familiar with called the Dirty South Revolutionaries. Okay? Now, let's uh, let's begin to do the math. Now, that, you know, that could be inconsequential except the logo for the Dirty South Revolutionaries was a, a skull. And you say, oh, well, there's a lot of um, popular music groups who utilize a skull. So we look further into it. They also uh, have a album cover for a song uh, that features a song 
called Fuel Injected War Machine. And on this album cover, you find a stylized Baphomet holding a, a bottle of MD-2020 in one hand. Now, it's been some time since uh, I dealt with uh, spirits and wine. But uh, MD-2020, people don't drink that. <laughs> so I said to myself, so what's the significance here? And it, the 20s jumped out at me. And then I looked at the cube, the design of the cube. The cube had four numbers on it. 2014, which was facing the public. And then the... The way that the cube was fitted into the space, the slot that it was in, right? This part, okay, the part that was pushed in against the cube, you couldn't see those two sides, right? It's a cube. On those two sides, you had 8 and 16. But the two sides that were protruding out of the space, it was as if there was a little notch. You know, imagine a Rubik's Cube or something. And you stick it inside of a a little notch that you've wedged out for it. Two sides are going to be covered up because of the notch. Okay, They'll be up against the sides of the notch so you won't be able to see what's on them two sides. The other two sides will be facing you. So what was facing you was 2014 which is the current year and what was inside was 8 and 16. 8 and 16, 20 and 14. 8 plus 16 is 24. 20 plus 14 is 34. 24 plus 34 is 58. 5 plus 8 is 13. So you have your 13 again. Alright, but let's look at the group called DSR, Dirty South Revolutionaries, and it didn't load up for me. Let's try it again. Let's try to load it up again. Uh, you got to see this logo and read their bio. Dirty South Revolutionaries, just you know, in, in case it don't come up, whatever. Dirty Soft Revolutionaries is definitely an uh, Illuminati mind control group from the uh, titles of the songs to the logos and the album covers. So I said to myself, it could be a coincidence. Excuse me. It could be a coincidence that this young man is uh, wearing, their, wearing their shirt and he happens to be out here uh, where we know Skull and Bones and other secret societies have contributed to the idea behind this monument that they call the Georgia Guidestones. It is a monument to the New World Order plan to cut down population. If you've not seen it before, I'll show you. I'll show you a picture or two. But uh, it could just be a, a, a coincidence. Except on his camouflage shorts, he had some patches. And who do that? Where they do that at? One of the patches was a skull head. So you have the skull head on the shirt. You have the cryptic uh, style writing of uh, the name of the group, DSR, Dirty South Revolutionaries. And I thought that DSR, uh, you know, that everything uh, concerning the group itself screamed mind control to me. And then as I looked at him, you know, he was tat tat tatted up. And I don't mean, you know, just a couple of tats all up and down his arm. And just his whole demeanor, to me, it screamed military mind control. And then again, you know, I'm from Detroit. Uh, you know, I'm just a brother. What do I know? But that's what I felt uh, was revealed to me. That, that the uh, his clothing betrayed his, his supposedly inconspicuous presence. There were too many signs and symbols adorning his gear, not to mention his military occult vibe, for me to believe that this entire event was anything other than a contrived ritual, an occult announcement ceremony. Okay, now when the 
worker goes up the ladder. Everything's symbolic. Jacob's ladder. Going up to Jacob's ladder. Grabbing the cube. Casting it down. Jacob's ladder is symbolic of, some would say, a pyramid. It's symbolic of going up the stairway to heaven to get to the top to take the cube which which is representative of the perfection of a God and to cast it down to earth we know that God is Lucifer who was cast down to earth but to cast it down to earth on its top face we see Master Mason and on the bottom J-A-M which I believe to be one of the meanings Junior Apprentice Mason one of the meanings multiple meanings here but broke down the letter value the numeric values of each letter J which is Y or I Yam I am it also represented that the master mason on top, the I am on the bottom. J represents Y or I. Then you do the numbers, okay? So you do everything in decent order. J be the tenth letter, representing the Yod again, representing the I am, the Almighty, being cast according to what the great work attempts to do. They want it to appear as if God is dead. John no did, John no did, John no did, and they cast him down. Okay, uh, by going up Jacob's ladder, contacting fallen fallen angels who assist them. Okay, Jacob's ladder will take you to the other realms, not to heaven, but to the other dimensions. So the J equals the tenth letter, ten. A, the first letter, the alpha or the beginning. A also an upside down. Ram, symbolic of Aries. It is the middle letter in the JAM sequence, and the Georgia Guidestones was erected or it was opened March 1980. Aries jumped out at me before I saw the actual date in March because it could have been under the astrological season that they know or call Pisces. But I bet. If I was a betting man, that it would be uh, Aries, because Aries is representative of the first, and again, this is the the uh, a new beginning or a new birth first. Aries representing the new birth, the newborn baby, also representing war. Okay, Aries the ram, Aries the god of war, and also representing murder. Okay. In order to get the population down to 500 million, which the Georgia Guidestones uh, suggests should be done, you have to kill a lot of people. And so that would require murder. So you have the Alpha, the A, and the M being the 13th letter. Add them up. 10 plus 1, 11, plus 13 is 24. 2 plus 4 is 6. So we keep hitting these numbers, the sixes, the threes, okay? So on the bottom, you have the six, the total of six. On the top, you have the two thirteens. Thirteen and thirteen is twenty-six. Two plus six is eight, okay? Um, the top or the inscription on the top represents the higher or what is to be on top and the inscription on the bottom represents what should be cast down or what should be uh, uh, relegated to the bottom throw it in the basement throw it to the side or on the bottom okay Okay, 13 to 13, 26, okay, that's 8, okay, right. All right, so, so yes, the uh, young tattooed man in the camouflage shorts with the skull patch on the shorts and with his black, dirty, soft revolutionaries. Think about that. 
Think about that. We know what uh, Goody Mob meant when they said Dirty South. But again, there's multiple meanings when we're talking about the Brotherhood men. They're talking about the South, the Queen of the South. These things is to represent down or below. Hell is below. And we know that uh, Lucifer wants to sit in the north, in the lodge. But his place is below. You say down south, up north, out west, right? Back east. East in the beginning, you go back. Okay, north is up. Okay, but uh, south then is considered down. So the Dirty South revolutionaries, and we'll be talking about revolution in this respect. You got evolution, it's with an R in the front, have mercy. Ra, evolution. So we're looking at symbolism having to do with the creation of the new world out of chaos, the destruction of, or, or the appearance of the destruction of the elite. One thing that Obama uh, tried to run, you know, the game he tried to run, you know, we're going to uh, even everything up, you know, this this new distribution of wealth or, you know, we're going to go hard on the people that's making uh, that's making too much money, you know, and, and, you know, he one of them, go figure. So that's that was a lightweight jam to the heavyweight that's getting ready to come. Well, they're really going to make it appear as if they've hit the uh, master mason, the Masonic elite, the masterminds, hit them with the hammer, crack them open, crack them up, busting them up, and give everybody a piece. Here, here you go. You take a piece, you take a piece. Which is what the man did after he cracked the cube. He gave people a piece before they asked for it. I didn't hear nobody ask for it audibly. First, first he gave them a piece. Then people began to say, oh, well, let me have this piece. It has something on it. And uh, that was the uh, 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 young woman who got the 16, the piece with the 16 on it. 16 is representative of a couple of things. Double infinity. All of the numbers that were on the cube were even numbers. 8, 16, 20, and 14. The 16 was representative of not only double infinity, remember, multiple meanings. Anybody tell you it means this, it means that, they don't know jack. You should tell them to scat. Because there's always layered meanings. Alright? So that's why I try to get the bottom line off rip before we get off into this because this can, you know, on some levels, and I know y'all not the dullest knives in the drawer, okay, nor the dullest bulbs in the lamp, but, you know, you get to running numbers by somebody, you can be talking to them about uh, stocks and bonds, and, you know, just sometimes, just the way the brain is uh, wired. You just get to running off too many numbers it, it'll sound like nonsense and uh, you know that's how I felt in trade class so I, I don't want to make y'all feel like that but I got the number science uh, down here for you um, but yes the 16 that the young lady received in her hand it was representative of infinity twice because again this has to do with the twins the duality the two pillars creating two U's double U Okay, M upside down, but the 16 also representing completion, 1 and 6, 7. Let's continue, let's go some more. Okay. All right, the W or the M being three sixes. 6 plus 6 plus 6, 18. 1 and 8 is 9. 6 plus 6 plus 6, 18. 1 and 8 is 9. You've got the two M's. 
Both of them is 666 and 666, or 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, 6 plus 6 plus 6, excuse me. <laughs> Three sixes, add them together, you got 18. One and eight, you got nine. So on the top, you have the nine, and on the bottom, you have this reverse, you have the six, the jam, equals six. We did the math, yes we did. We did the math to the jam, here it is right here. The J, the tenth letter, the A, the first letter, thirteen, or the thirteenth letter, the M. J A M. Twenty-four. The total of each letter's numerical value. Okay, doing geometria. A equals one, B equals two, C equals three, and so on. J would equal ten. A equals one, and M equals thirteen. Ten plus one plus thirteen equals twenty-four. Two plus four is six. So at the bottom of the cube, you have the representation of 6, and at the top, you have its inversion, the 9. What does that mean? Well, in the 69, my Humpty Nose will tickle your rear. It means that on the top, you have the representation of the higher, the 9, the highest man, man in his highest self, as in the uh, numerology behind 9-11. Man in his higher state, 9, 10 is God, and 11, the wizardry, the duality, the man plus the demon makes the wizard. Because the man don't do the magic, the demon does. So that's the 11. So the 9 represents not just man, 6 represents man. Okay? Five-pointed star is a feminine, really, truly, a feminine uh, representation in sacred geometry. Because there is no middle appendage to represent the phallus going down the middle. But in a hexagram, six-pointed star, you have the middle appendage to represent the phallus in the middle. Going down at the bottom, pointing down south. Well, so six represents man, period. The inversion of man, the higher man. The man under new age or under the Aquarian age deception. The man uh, about to reach the 11, the wizardry. About to do the alchemical change. Not from base metal to gold, but from base humanity. From regular human man to superhuman man according to, excuse me, according to the writers of the new age. According to the Aquarian age philosophers like Manly P. Hall and Albert Pike, Alistair Crowley, Alice Bailey, Madame Blavatsky. Okay, so that's the jam in the MM. In the MM. But what do I know? Not much. Then you have the 2014, which represents the current year on one level, but also represents what else? You have the 20 plus 14. 34, 3, and 4, 7. Again, you have the same number showing up, the infinity showing up. And you have the 8 and 16. 8 plus 16 is 24. 2 and 4 is 6. So you have the 6 on one side, 7 on the other. 6 plus 7, 13 again. But that's not I'm throwing nobody off. All right. Dirty Soft Revolutionaries alert happened to come from the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. All of the numbers that are on the cube are even, which means they're made of twin numbers. Yes. Ten. Doubled is twenty. Seven. Doubled is 14. 4 doubled is 8. And 8 doubled is 16. I added all those numbers together. Okay, the halves of each of the numbers. And that equaled 11. Again, the two pillars. 11, the two U's, the Sasha Fierce, the Beyonce, the twins, 
okay? The Boaz, the Jackin, the twins, the, the, the equal opposite, the black and white of the chessboard, the darkness, the light, the male, the female, Baphomet, both together in one, the twin, the, du the dual nature, the double-minded man, unstable in all his ways, the double tongue, okay? The double-hearted. But, okay, we looked at the cube another way. I said, okay, let me look at it another way. I wanted to add, because the numbers are going around the cube, okay? If you go around the cube, all right, the top and the bottom, the letters, the numbers are going around. So I said, well, let me add up the numbers. We got 20, 14, 8, and 6. Excuse me, 8 and 16. I added the 8 and the 16, got 24. Then I added the 20 and the 14, and I got 34. I said, okay, well, let me shift the number over. So I said, well, let me add the 8 and the 14, going the other way. Got 22. Then I added the 16 and the 20. And I got 36. So you see what I was doing? You have the numbers going around the circumference. Well, the circumference is for circles. But going around the cube, the sides of the cube, okay? The one, two, three, four, the four sides of the cube. On each side, you had a number. Okay, 20, say, at at this face, the back of 20 is 8, to the side 16, the back of that is 14. So I added them up. I added up 20 and the 14 over here. That's what this is over here. Where is that? Where is that? Oh, that's what this is here. I added the 20 and the 14, I got 34. I added the 8 and the 16, I got 24. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm adding the sides now. I added the uh, 14 and the 8, I got 22, and I added the 16 and the 20, and I got 36. Then I added all of that together. It would have been bad. I got, for the, uh, for doing the 8 and 16 and 24, and the 20 plus 14, 34, add them together, I got 58. Then I did 14 and 8, made 22, and I got 16 plus 20, that made 36, added that together, I got 58 again. Well now, 58 plus 58 is 116, which just happens to be the inversion of 9-11. Coincidence? Well, where was the Dark Knight shooting done at? Which was another ritual, um, a, a secret society ritual, okay, used for behavior modification. So I said, well, this is beyond the realm of coincidence. So again, all the even numbers, all made of twin numbers, add them together, I got 116, which is the inversion of 9-11. Can't make it up. And again, this is not a uh, 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 selective belief. It's not superstition. It is what it is. So when the park worker, the master mason park worker, cast the cube down like a die, like a dice, the master mason posing as the park worker then climbs back down the uh, ladder it didn't appear like the stone was that heavy to me but maybe he was just being careful he's in the union but as he comes back down the ladder he then uses this symbolic hammer and chisel which appeared to be symbolic of the arm and hammer to me the breaking again you create something they created this great structure this industrial machine and then they threw sugar in the tank, stopped the motor city, stopped the motor of the machine, seized the motor so the machine itself would no longer be able to function the old way. So now you can build a new machine. The people will be uh, uh, accepting of a new machine because the old one broke. That's how it had to go. 
So he broke the cube, symbolic of the uh, taking one for the team that the brotherhood is doing by allowing for themselves to be targeted as the source of all evil in this information age, you see. So they're going to be broken up or it's going to appear in front of your eyes that they're broken up. So that, you know, you can be distracted and believe, well, they're out the way. They may even allow for Obezel, Obezi, for Sheezy. That's right. They may even allow for him, for Barry and Mike, to go ahead and uh, uh, portray, uh, uh, perpetrate as if they took them down. That's right. He tried to be so hip on everything else pop culture. I know that they understand not only that he's being called what he's being called an antichrist, which he is one of the antichrists against the Messiah, a false Messiah. He was a false Messiah, a false savior. They know that he's being called that, but they also know that folks are starting to point fingers up. Folks have been for years now pointing fingers Believing they found the culprit. So for him to be so hip, he's got to come out and be like, well, yeah. Well, yeah, we found the culprit. And let's let's put a stop to them. Uh, right now, I'm going to sign executive order uh, number 666. And uh, we're going to put a stop to uh, this secret cabal. And... They're going to act as if they put a stop to it. They put the hammer and the chisel to it. Bam! Cracked it open. And give everybody a piece of what they've been holding on to. And that's uh, what time it is. All right. Now, for y'all that don't know nothing about the Guidestone, go on Wikipedia and look it up. You don't want to. You want me to read to you? You want me to read to you, little babies? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody. Not everybody. But uh, uh, hey, this is the service I provide. Some facts about the Guidestones. Well, first of all, it has a druidic, a druidic design. It'll put you in mind of Stonehenge. You ever seen Stonehenge before? Now, I can't help you if you ain't never seen Stonehenge. Get in there and get to Googling. Googly eyed thing. I'm through with you. But you want to go ahead and take a look at. The, the guide stones, what they look, what they look like. Maybe I will pull it up on my phone here for you. I can do that. Um, they're 19 feet tall. They're located in Elbert County. They are also called the American Stonehenge. Well, you know me. I had to look at Elbert County. What does it mean? Albert County. You can't tell me Elbert, not Albert. A and E interchange. Sacred. Secret. It's the same thing. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean for y'all that ain't never seen a, a guide stone before, I'm going to show you in a second. Well, let's look at the word Elbert County. Elberton, Georgia, the city as uh, being in the county, Albert County. Albert. I looked at, of course, the L, the Al, representing Lord or Lord of, having to do with the Lord or of the Lord. Okay? L, like uh, uh, it is the divine the, El Quran, El Qaeda. Elohim, El Shaddai, Micah, Uriel, Gabriel, Ezekiel, okay, the El uh, having to do with like God or of God or uh, more formally of the Lord, the Lord, having to do with Lord, so, so uh, there's the bright Lord or the bright God because Bert comes from Barat, Barat, Bert, Barat, 
bright in Minnick. What do we mean? Elbert, the bright God. Who's the bright God? Shine a star. You've never seen nothing before in your life. That's a God song. That's the Georgia God song right there. Now, the interesting thing about, see it? You see? You can't see. You're blind. Wait a minute. Look it up. Come on, R2. R2. Okay. There it is. You see it? That's a Georgia Guidestone fire. All right. I'm going to go check it out soon. I got to make sure it's really there. They lie about so much everything. It might not even be there. Okay. The aerial view I thought was interesting. Because from over here, you know, you've got the four stones each uh, in a cardinal position, point, or direction. North, south, east, west. But interesting, I thought, was how on one side of each stone that points in, a, in one of the cardinal directions, you have a language. In which you find these instructions about... Uh, basically new world order commandments about how to cut down population and what you should do to have a nice healthy new world order yeah that's right they make like they don't know who put it up uh, or, or who was really behind it uh, the uh, name that is credited as the author of the information that's written on the guide stones that's the thing it's a guide on the guide stone then, then, and that information, the inscriptions that were put there, is said to come from someone called uh, R.C. Christian, which I deduce means Rosy Cross Christian, or Rosicrucian, another one of the many derivatives and secret societies that are going to remain hidden while the Garden Variety Mason, the speculative Mason, takes a hit. You got Russian on one side, Chinese on the other side. What they got to do with each other? They both make AKs. <laughs> Russian is better. But you got the Russian on one side, Chinese on the other. Well, they're both communist countries. What else? Come on. It has to do with Asia Europe. Asia Europe connection. Asia Europe connection. Let's go here. Uh, on this side, you have the English translation of the plans for a healthy new world order <laughs> on the other side you have the Spanish what they got to do with the Americas the North South America connection to move my shadowy paws and then over here you got not paws not a dog over here you got Arabic and Hebrew Arabic on one side Hebrew on the other both uh, supposedly uh, from the same line of Abraham, Ishmael, Lights, and Israel, Lights, both having to do with the area of the world known as the Middle East. This having to do with the area of the world known as East Asia. This having to do with the area of the world known as the North and South uh, Americas. And over here, you got Swahili on one side and Hindi on the other. This has to do with the dark continents of the dark peoples, the aboriginal peoples, the original peoples, Africa, and the part of, of uh, India, the dark east, the ancient dark east, the Dravidians of India were as black uh, as the blackest Africans, and um, they were the original people of India. And then, of course, you have the uh, aborigines from Australia. So you have all of the continents represented there in that little dynamic. Not all of the languages, but all of the continents. So there will be dominant languages on each of the continents because they're going to cut down a whole lot of extras. You see, it's hard to control a lot. Okay, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. So what they're going to do is cut things down to manageable numbers, let them tell it. 
So you have the Ten Commandments of the NWO. Y'all want to hear them? Here they go. Number one, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Number two, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Number three, unite humanity with a living new language. Number four, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. It, it, it all sounds nice. It all sounds like fun and games till somebody pokes out the eye. You need to poke it out. Number five, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. So oh, that's going to happen. Number six, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. World court, world police, world order. One world court. Number seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Downsize. No more mayor, Wayne County Sheriff, uh, 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 deputy. No. One or two people over a province. You can control the one or two people, and we control the province. You got a bunch of different people, you got a bunch of different people to run things by. Number eight, balance personal rights with social duties. Your duty to the state should take more weight than your personal rights. That's what that means. Number nine, prize truth, beauty, which is in the eye of the beholder. Love, which they mean to be evil. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Seeking harmony with the infinite. And number 10. Be not a cancer on the earth. You've heard uh, uh, Prince uh, Albert. And you've heard um, Bill Gates and the rest of them. Talk about how life would be more sustainable if it was less of us. Useless eaters. Less humans. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. And mercy. It's going to be the excuse. But. So we know lots of things are going down right now. The pandemic agenda is a real thing. And a, a dream uh, came by way of uh, one of my uh, beloved uh, family members. And um, they shared with me this dream and I know that it was a vision you know you can dream about something because you was watching something on TV or because something happened to you when the Lord sends you something uh, it's unmistakable and this was unmistakable to me it was quite obvious that uh, they were being warned to get prepared so uh, I feel uh, an obligation to warn you as well no fear fear is not of God for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so if you got a sound mind you in your right mind whatever it is you saving up for that you don't have to have forego that get some things you should have some things you need every home every person that's the head of a household should have certain things we've talked about them before some things I ain't got to say no more. You know what I'm talking about. But also, you should have a generator. Absolutely. You can afford it. If you can afford some big stupid rims, or you can afford uh, some of your other uh, follyful whims, might not be a bad idea. Okay? To have that. To have those things before you indulge in the other things that help make life worth living of course I understand that was overstood and got to be explained but don't put the cart before the horse hello so yes get some things get them now get them now um, do some re uh, 
It was turned on to colloidal silver uh, by uh, one of the members of our church here, and it's it it, it appears uh, to be helpful. Uh, but you you know you do the research that that would take a a whole long uh, extended teaching, and we're gonna get out of here at the one hour mark. But yeah, get do get prepared. The next videos we're going to be focusing on binding and loosing uh, as as uh, was requested by uh, um, one of the newer viewers. Uh, watch watch Watchmen for Yah or something along that line. I'm I'm sorry, but you know what I'm talking about. So uh, we're going to do that uh, because it's very necessary. It's unpluggable out.